All right, everybody. This is going to be one of the most important videos I have done. And I say that because so many people believe that the Jewish state over there is Israel, but it's not. Let's read this article. UNESCO fails to acknowledge Jewish ties to the Temple Mount. The United, the, the United Nations body passes resolution denying all connection between Jews, Jerusalem, and the Temple Mount. Netanyahu, to say that Israel has no connection to the Temple Mount in the Western Wall is like saying China has no connection to the Great Wall. So, let's read this. The Muslims are claiming that they have right to this land when they don't have right to it either. But let's scroll down. Let's go right. Start right here. The draft resolution submitted by Algeria, Egypt, Lebanon, Morocco, Oman, Qatar, and Sudan will be referred to UNESCO's executive board for formal approval next week. 24 countries voted in favor of the proposal. Algeria, Bangladesh, Brazil, Chad, China, Dominican Republic, Egypt, Iran, Lebanon, Malaysia, Morocco, Mauritius, Mexico, Mozambique, Nicaragua, Nigeria, Oman, Pakistan, Qatar, Russia, Senegal, South Africa, Sudan, and Vietnam. These are all the countries who said that Israel, that's over there, the Jews, have no connection with that land, pretty much. Then it says, six countries voted against it. Estonia, Germany, Lithuania, the Netherlands, United Kingdom, and of course, United States, which is the biggest supporter of the fake state of Israel. Now, I want you to notice something. Let's look at this. Estonia, okay? Let's go here. What do we have? Where is Estonia at? Estonia at? It's in Europe. Okay, let's go back. Um, Germany. Okay. Where is Germany at? Europe. Okay. Lithuania. It's Netherlands. Uh, I don't have it up, but you see, the Netherlands is in Europe, thought I had it up, and the UK, so let's close some of these windows out, you see all these places are in Europe, now let's go back to the article, Estonia, Germany, Lithuania, the Netherlands, and United Kingdom. All of these are European countries that were against what they were saying. Let's go to the Bible. I'm going to read right here. Starting at verse number one. Now these are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And unto them were sons born after the flood. The sons of Japheth, Gomer, and Magog, and Madai, and Javan, and Tubal, and Meshach, and Tyrus. And the sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz. See, I told you it was in the Bible. I talked about this, er talked about this earlier. Ashkenaz, where you get 
Ashkenazi, and you get Nazi, Nazis. Rephath, Togomar, and Togomar, and the sons of Jaban, Elisha, and Tarshish, Kittim, and Dudanim. By these were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their lands, everyone after his tongue, after their families, in their nations. Then he goes and talks about the sons of Ham. Ham means black. That's where you get your Africans from. But right here, the scriptures tell us where the Gentiles come from and their lineage. Ashkenaz, that's going to be important. So let's look, up, look at a map. Let's look at the um, table of nations. See if I can find it. Uh, here we go. Wait for this to come up. Computer is slow because I have about 2,000 tabs open. <laughs> Man, that is moving slow. Here you go. You can see where they settled at. Madai, there's a, there goes Gomer, there goes Magog, there goes Ashkenaz, Remphath, Javan, Meshach and Tubal, Dudanim, Elisha, Kittim, all these is where the Gentiles settle. Let's see if I can get another picture. Let's go with this one. Europe. So all the countries who were in support of the fake Jews who were over there claiming to be Jews were European countries. Why so? Because that's where they came from. They're supporting their own people. So if they came from this region and they are Gentiles according to the flesh, then how are they saying that they are Jews? All right there. Ashkenaz. So let's go back to this article. Um, right here. Wow. 26 countries abstain from the vote. So you got these countries. They didn't want anything to do with it. Check this out, though. Israel, along with the United States, has been working in recent weeks to reduce the majority support within UNESCO's executive board. These efforts bore fruit, leading France, Sweden, Slovenia, India, Argentina, and Togo, who initially supported the resolution to abstain instead. So at first, it was only Israel and the United States, and then they got the rest of these nations to get in with it. I wonder why that is. And then Benjamin Netanyahu, who is evil, this man is evil. I don't care what nobody says. This man is evil, and I'm going to show you that he is evil and how evil he is. Um, he goes in and says, right here, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu slammed the decision to adopt the resolution saying, the theater of the absurd continues with UNESCO and today the organization has made its most bizarre decision by saying the people of Israel have no connection to the Temple Mount and the Western Wall. Now, why in the world would these countries be saying that they have no connection with the Temple Mount or the Western Wall. Hello, people. There must be something to that. But we don't go by what man says. We go by what the Bible says. But I'm sharing with you this article to show you that I'm not just talking out the side of my head. Now, look what he says. Obviously, they have never read the Bible. Obviously, he has never read the Bible. He doesn't believe the Bible, and I'm going to show you that. Obviously, they have never read the Bible. He continued. 
but I would advise UNESCO members to visit the Ark of Titus in Rome, where they can see what the Romans brought to Rome after they destroyed and looted the Temple Mount 2,000 years ago. One can see engraved on the Ark the seven branch menorah, which is a symbol of the Jewish people as well as a symbol of the Jewish state today. So his in his defense to say that the people who are over there are truly Jews is that they have the symbol of the branch menorah. Anybody can take on that. And I'm going to show you what they did. Um, he says, however, I believe that the historical truth will prevail. He concluded, he's absolutely right. It, the historical truth will prevail. So where are we at? Let me scroll down. Um, where's the link at? Where's the link? Here you go. As part of these efforts, the Israeli ministry a foreign affairs has released a pamphlet of the historical Jewish connection to Jerusalem. So this pamphlet is supposed to show that they have a historical Jewish connection to Jerusalem. So let's check that out. Let's close this. I have about 500 tabs open, so please bear with me as I find it. Okay, here we go. The scroll up as you see this is what they officially released Jewish historical connection to Jerusalem they have a picture or inscription and then they have this that doesn't mean anything as you see it says state of Israel Ministry of Foreign Affairs but if we scroll down they got some more stuff royal seal discovered um, let me scroll over so you can see it. They say this proves that they have a connection with Jerusalem. To me, this just shows artifacts that they discovered because they are in Jerusalem. Um, where we at? Right here. This is what he was referring to. They were taking out the menorah when... Israel was sacked the siege of Jerusalem in 70 AD. They took it out. You can see that these are Romans. And it's on here. This is what he was referring to. That does not prove that they are Jews. Discovery, the Ark of Titus. Tells you where it's located at. Significance. The honorific ark was constructed by the emperor Domitian shortly after the death of his older brother Titus to commemorate Titus's victories, most notably the siege of Jerusalem, depicted within the ark of the treasures from the temple in Jerusalem, including the menorah, among others, being carried triumphantly into Rome. So he says these artifacts support that they that he is a Jew and those who are over there are mostly Jews. I'm gonna show you that he's lying. I just showed you in the scriptures who the Gentiles are according to the flesh. It's important that we realize it's according to the flesh. Just like you have Jews according to the flesh, you have Gentiles according to the flesh. But when you are in Christ, your identity is no longer that your identity is Christ. But um, again, the Gentiles, Ashkenaz, Ashkenazi. Now let's go back here. We want to go Ashkenazi Jews. Let's read what it says. Ashkenazi Jews, also known as Ashkenazi Jews. Notice the root of the word, Ashkenaz. Listen to what it says. Right here. Ashkenaz Jews are a Jewish diaspora 
sorry if I pronounced that wrong, population who coalesced as a distinct community of Jews in the Holy Roman Empire around the end of the first millennium. The traditional diaspora language of Ashkenazi Jews consisted of various dialects of Yiddish. They settled and established communities throughout Central and Eastern Europe. Let's go back here. Ashkenaz. Ashkenazi Jews. They aren't really Jews. And I'm going to prove that to you. They don't even follow the Torah. Let's go back one more time. Ashkenaz. The sons of Japheth, Japheth, by these were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their lands. So the Bible tells us who the Gentiles are according to the flesh. Let's go back one more time so you can get this. Ashkenazi Jews in the Holy Roman Empire. Are you starting to get the picture? But just in case, let's put all the pieces together. Again, they settled and established communities throughout Central and Eastern Europe. Okay, what did we just look at on the map? Let's bring this back up. The Table of Nations. Oh, there we go. Europe. Isles of the Gentiles. Tarshish. Greece. All these different places. Crete. There goes Javan, there goes Ashkenaz, there goes Magog. Right there, you see it. And they got, they go Nimrod over in Asia and stuff, and parts of Asia and mostly um, Africa and everything. But you see where did the Gentiles settle? Europe. Okay, so we go back here. The Ashkenazi Jews from the Holy, Holy Roman Empire. Where did they settle? Throughout Central and Eastern Europe. So we have a connection. We have a historical connection that confirms what the Bible tells us about the Gentiles and the Ashkenazi. And you can go trace all these different groups out and see where they settled at. And you will see they settled in Europe. So let's go back here. Let's um, go to the next one. The Khazars, because this is who these people are. They're Khazars. The Khazars, Turkish, where's Turkey at? Were a semi nomadic Turkic people so, who created what for its duration was the most powerful polity to emerge from the breakup of the Western Turkic Khaganate, the Khazar. Um, Kaganate or Kazaria. Astride a majority artery of commerce between Northern Europe and Southwestern Asia. Kazaria became one of the most foremost trading emporia of the medieval world, commanding the Western marches of the Silk Road and playing a key commercial role as a crossroad between China, the Middle East, and Kavan Rust. For some three centuries, the Khazars dominate the vast area extending from the Volgodon steeps to the eastern Crimea and the northern Caucasus. They go a map right there. Let's look at this map. Let's look at this and see what it shows us. Okay, you see this is in the same. Where is this at? Europe, what we just looked at. Let y'all get a chance to look at this. That was their empire. So let's go back. Um, Let me see. That's where you get the Huns from.
See you right here. There we go. That this is where we want to get right here. The native religion of the Khazars is thought to have been Tengrism, like that of the North Caucasian Huns and other Turkic peoples. The polyethnic populace of the Khazar Khaganate appears to have been a multi confessional mosaic of pagan, Tengrit, Jewish, Christian, and Muslim worshippers. The ruling elite of the Khazars was said to be Judah, Halavi, and Abraham, Ibn, Ibn, whatever, died to have converted to Rabbinic Judaism in the 8th century. But the scope of the conversion within the Khazar Canate remains uncertain. If you dig even deeper, you will see that there was war going on and the empire was about to fall and they converted to Judaism to put themselves off as Jews, but they were not really Jews. They were not Jews according to the flesh and they were not Jews by the spirit. They only did it because they didn't want to get mixed up in a battle that was going on between the different religions during that time. So they chose one that seemed to be neutral and they do not follow the Torah. They follow the satanic Talmud. And then you see this starts to pop up right here. In the late 19th century, a theory emerged that the core of today's Ashkenazi Jews are genetically descended from a hypothetical Kazarian Jewish dysphoria who had migrated westward from modern Russia and Ukraine into modern France and Germany. This theory still finds occasional support, but most scholars view it, at, view it with skepticism. The theory is sometimes associated with anti-Semitism and anti Zionism and so you can go read all this stuff about about the Khazars and how they were at war at first and er, you know all this stuff all this knowledge and this Ashkenazi connection as they say is fake is um they call it a theory it's not a theory. It's been proven to be true. So let's close that out. So what is anti-Semitism? Anti-Semitism is hostility, prejudice, or discrimination against Jews. A person who holds such positions is called an anti-Semite. Anti-Semitism is widely considered to be a form of racism. Now, how can a Christian, a true born-again Christian, be anti-Semitic when Jesus Christ is a Jew? It's impossible. We just saw who the Ashkenazi Jews are right here. They're Gentiles. So we see that they are not Jews according to the flesh. They are Gentiles. So you may still be saying, well, they follow the Torah. They follow Ju Judaism. So that means that they are Jews. I'm going to show you that they have no claim to the land and they have no claim to the physical lineage. So if you think I'm an anti-Semite, then you're saying that I'm a racist and that I hate Jesus. So you need to watch what you say and at least listen completely to what I'm saying and what the Spirit is speaking through me to say. Um... List of 
Israeli Ashkenazi Jews. Let's see who we can find on this list. Who are we looking for? Oh, there you go. Benjamin Netanyahu is a Ashkenazi Jew. Ashkenaz, Ashkenazi. He's a Gentile. So he's not even a Jew according to the flesh. Now, let's minimize this. Let's go to this scripture right here. 1 John chapter 5, verse number 12. He that hath the Son hath life. And he that hath not the Son of God hath not, hath not life. This man, Benjamin Netanyahu, does not have the Lord Jesus Christ. So he does not have life. Now let's look at this man. Benjamin B.B. Netanyahu is the current prime minister of Israel. Netanyahu also currently serves as a member of the Knesset and chairman of the Lukid party. Born in Tel Aviv, Israel to secular Jewish, keyword in that is Jewish, parents. So his parents were secular Jews. Jewish means, you know, Jewish. you taking on something. Secular Jewish parents. So let's look and see what the word secular means. Secularism. Secularism is the principle of the separation of government institutions and persons mandated to represent the state from religious institutions and religious dignitaries. One manifestation of secularism is asserting the right to be free from religious rule and teachings or in a state declared to be neutral on matters of belief from the imposition by government of religion or religious practices upon its people. Another manifestation of secularism is the view that public activities and decisions, especially political ones, should be uninfluenced by religious beliefs and or practices. Secularism draws its intellectual roots from Greek and Roman philosophers. Who are the Greeks? They're Gentiles. Who are the Romans? They're Gentiles. Let's go back. Born in Tel Aviv, Israel to secular Jewish parents. Now, just in case you need more evidence, let's go to Etymology Dictionary Online and look up the word. This gives us the root of the word. Secular, living in the world, not belonging to a religious order, also belonging to the state. Not belonging to a religious order. I thought he was a Jew. Worldly, secular, pertaining to a generational age. Worldly not belonging to a religious order. I thought he was a Jew. If you are a Jew, you belong to a religious order. The Torah, secular, also in Greek, of this world. He's worldly. But let's get deeper into it. Let's go back to his page. I think we can close this out. Um, let's go down some. Let me find this real quick. Let's go right here. Let's go to LGBT rights and see what his views are on LGBT rights. Netanyahu supports equal rights before the law for LGBT citizens, stating the struggle for every person to be recognized as equal before the law is a long struggle, and there is still a long way to go. I am proud, I am proud that Israel is among the most open countries in the world 
in relation to the LGBT community discourse. So this man, one, claims to be a Jew. When we just seen that he is not a Jew, either way, I'm going to give you even more evidence. Two, he supports LGBT rights. He supports the LGBT community. Let's look at the next thing. Ethiopian Jewish integration. Notice the word they're using. Jewish. Ethiopian Jewish. Meaning you've taken on the customs of somebody, of the Jewish people, of the Jews. Um, but look what it says right here. African Hebrew Israelites of Jerusalem. Why didn't it say African Hebrew Jewish of Jerusalem. It says African Hebrew Israelites of Jerusalem. Then it goes in and talks about it. He talks about he supports the integration of the African Hebrew Israelites of Jerusalem into Israeli society, which is a lie because he's a racist. You can go look that up for yourself. Um, Jewish. We go back up. Jewish, but when they refer to this right here, they distinctly say Hebrew Israelites. Now, not all Africans are Hebrew Israelites. Africans and Negroes are two different groups of people. Let's go to the Bible. right here John chapter 1 verse 47 Jesus saw Nathaniel coming to him and said to him behold an Israelite indeed in whom is no guile an Israelite look what Paul says I say then have God cast away his people God forbid for I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. Yet Benjamin and Yahoo says that if we read the Bible, then we would know that they are Jews. So if we read the Bible, then we know about the Israelites. And we see that they have put a difference between Israelite and Jewish, African Hebrew Israelites. Just because a person is African doesn't necessarily mean that they are a Hebrew Israelite because Africans come from the lineage of Ham. Ham means black. But you did have um, Africans during that time, but you, they get it mixed up. They think that because a person is African American, you know, that, that they come from Africa, which is not the case. Africans sold the Negroes into slavery um let's go right here let's go look at his dad this is his dad benzoin nanyahu born where was he born at warshock russian empire so this again confirms the connection where we want to go where i want to go right here right here his field of expertise was the history of the jews in spain and he served as an editor of the hebrew encyclopedia he spent a significant portion of his life in the united states let's go back up i missed the part yeah here we go a scholar of judaic history he was also an activist activist in the what revisionist zionism movement so this is not stuff that i'm making up his father pushed for zionism and we also saw that his parents were secular jews let's go down here we go zionist activism 
during his studies, Netanyahu, this is in reference to his dad, became active in revisionist Zionism, a movement of people who had split from their mainstream Zionist counterparts, believing those in the mainstream were too conciliatory to the British authorities governing Palestine and espousing a more militant right-wing version of Jewish nationalism than the one advocated by the labor Zionists who led Israel in his early years. You see, I'm going to give you the truth. I'm not going to pick and choose what I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you all the truth. And so you can make the connections and see that what is being told to you is not a lie. It's biblical and it's historical facts. His dad was a Zionist. He is a Zionist. He is not a Jew. He does not follow the Torah. Let's continue on. I'm going to show you that now. Netanyahu reportedly to say legal system based on Talmud. They try to put the Jew, the Jewish traditions and the Talmud, they try to lump it all in one, one pot. Well, you can't do that because the, the Jewish customs and the Jewish religion has nothing to do with the Talmud. It's satanic. Let's read it. As part of the proposed legislation to enshrine Israel's status as a Jewish state, the Israeli court system would be based on Talmudic law and the Jewish calendar would be formally adopted. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu allegedly told Yaakov Vider, a member of the Lukit Party's ultra-Orthodox faction. Notice this is the Times of Israel.com, a legit news source for Israel. Netanyahu said, we will legally define the Talmud as the basis of the Israeli legal system. I told you, this man is not a Jew, not by the flesh and not inwardly. He's a fake synagogue of Satan. He follows the Talmud, which is so satanic. If you read some of the things that were in there, it will almost make you want to throw up. They hate Jesus, which is why they hate Christians. So I've given you all this evidence, and this is stuff that you can go confirm for yourself. But just in case you don't believe still, let's go here. Let's look at the Talmud. Satanic verses of the Talmud's Jewish supremacy. If a goy Gentile hits a Jew, he must be killed. And it gives you the uh, quotation for it. Now, isn't that stupid? They call Gentiles goys. He said, Jew, he must be killed. Yet, who does the Bible say that the Gentiles are? Let's go back. Make sure we get this right now. By these were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their lands. So they're claiming a lineage that's not even theirs. And then they have the audacity to say if a Gentile hits a Jew, he must be killed. So they need to kill themselves. I ain't saying they should do that, but they're hypocrites. If a Jew finds an object lost by a Gentile or Goy, it does not have to be returned. If a Jew murders a Goy, there will be no death penalty. So this is what the Talmud believes. And we just saw Let's go back. We, Netanyahu said, we will legally define the Talmud as the basis of the Israeli legal system. So that means that if you are, if you are considered a Gentile in their eyes, if they murder you because they say they are Jews, there is no death penalty. What a Jew steals from a Goy, he may keep. Jews may use Sub, sub, subterfuges to circumvent a goy. All children of the goyim, Gentiles, are animals. 
girls born of the goyim are in a state of nida menstrual uncleanness from birth let's continue on and see some of the other things they say the goyim the gentiles are not humans they are beasts if you eat with a goy it is the same as eating with a dog even the best of the goyim should all be killed sexual intercourse between the goyim is like intercourse between animals when it comes to a gentile in peace times one may harm him indirectly for instance by removing a ladder after he had fallen into a crevice let's look what they say about the lord jesus christ yasha derogatory for jesus is in hell being boiled in hot excrement so you have ever heard anybody preaching that jesus is in hell or jesus burned in hell this is where they got it from they got it from the satanic talmud yashu is an acronym for the jewish curse may his jesus name be wiped out forevermore <laughs> yasha jesus was sexually immoral and worshiped a brick jesus was cut off from the jewish people for his wickedness and refused to repent miriam talking about mary the hairdresser had sex with many men she who was the descendant of princes and governors the virgin mary played the harlot with carpenters christians who reject the talmud will go to hell and be punished there for all generations oh, let's go back just in case y'all didn't get it netanyahu said we will legally define the talmud as the basis of the israeli legal system they are the synagogue of satan that is spoken about in the book of revelation just in case you need more evidence this is talking about the talmud they try to be biased toward it possible talmudic references to jesus sanhedrin 43a relates the trial and execution of a sorcerer named jesus yeshu in hebrew and his and his five disciples the sorcerer is stoned and hanged on the eve of passover so they call jesus our lord and savior a sorcerer who Netanyahu supports these writings of the talmud he's a devil sanhedrin 107 tells of jesus yeshu offended his teacher by paying too much attention to the innkeeper's wife jesus wished to be forgiven oh so jesus sinned huh in their eyes jesus was a sinner but his rabbi was too slow to forgive him and jesus in despair went away and put up a brick idol and worshiped it so they're saying that jesus was a idol worshiper it's the same man benjamin Netanyahu, who was over the fake synagogue of satan israel this man right here who supports the talmud and is pushing for the talmud to be israeli law they do not follow the torah because they are not jews it was a setup let's go back in getting 56b and 57a a story is mentioned in which onkelos summons up the spirit of a yeshu who sought to harm israel he describes his punishment in the afterlife as boiling in excrement they're talking about jesus some scholars claim that the hebrew name yeshu is not a short form of the name yeshua but rather an acrostic form uh, but rather an acrostic for the hebrew phrase may his name and memory be blotted out so they took his name they changed it for it to be derogatory changing it to yeshu which means may his name and memory be blotted 
out. They're not. They can't blot his name out. They can't. They hate Jesus. And then here goes some more stuff. Scholars have identified the following references in the Talmud that some conclude refer to Jesus. They do refer to Jesus. Jesus as a sorcerer with disciples. Healing in the name of Jesus. They talk about that. The Torah teacher and different, different things. As a son or disciple that turned out badly. As a frivolous disciple who practiced magic and turned to idolatry. This is what they're saying about our Lord and Savior Jesus. Jesus punishment and afterlife. Jesus execution. Jesus as the son of Mary. And we saw what they saw about um, the blessed Mary. So you see it. Nothing that I'm making up. Nothing to dealing with racism. But is race involved? Absolutely. And how do we get here? The Havara Agreement. The Havara Agreement, the, or transfer agreement, was an agreement between Nazi Germany and who? Zionist German Jews. Signed on August 25th, 1933. The agreement was finalized, finalized after three months of talks by the Zionist Federation of Germany and the Anglo-Palestinian Palestine Bank. Now, who did we see was a Zionist? His father, and he is a Zionist also. It goes on to say, and the economic authorities of Nazi Germany, it was a major factor in making possible the immigration of approximately 60,000 German Jews to Palestine. Palestine is Israel. In the Bible, it's also referred to as Palestine. If you go look through history, it's referred to as the land of Canaan, but it's still talking about Israel, what we call today the land of Israel. This is how the Jews, the German Jews got over there who aren't really Jews because they followed the Talmud. You see, it talks about the Holocaust. That's something in itself. It was all a setup. Satan knew what he was doing. The Havara Agreement between Nazi Germany and Zionist German Jews. It was signed. They have a coin for this, but they don't teach you these things because they don't want you to know these things. Um, let's go down here. The Havara Transfer Agreement was agreed. There you go right there. The Havar Transfer Agreement was agreed to by the German government in 1933 and continued in effect until the German government ceased to support it in 1938. It was too late by then. Under the agreement, Jews fleeing persecution in Nazi Germany could use some of their assets to purchase German manufactured goods for export. Now, why would they need to purchase um, German manufactured goods if they were being enslaved, if they were put in concentration camps? And they were going to be killed. Thus salvaging some part. And if 6 million of them were killed. Thus salvaging some part of their personal wealth during immigration. Talks about how they made money off of it. And they were able to um, take that over to uh, Palestine. Israel. At one point in time it was called Palestine. Let's go over here. The Balfour Declaration. The Balfour Declaration was a letter dated November 2nd, 1917 from the United Kingdom's Foreign Secretary Arthur James Balfour to who? Walter Rothschild, second Baron Rothschild, a leader of the British Jewish community for transmission to the Zionist Federation of Great Britain and Ireland. It read, His Majesty's Government his Majesty's government view with favor the establishment in Palestine of a national home for the Jewish people and will use their best endeavors to facilitate the achievements of this object. It being clearly understood that nothing shall be done which may prejudice the civil and religious rights of existing non-Jewish communities in Palestine are the rights and 
political status enjoyed by the Jews in any other country. This is what pretty much got the Zionists the land of Israel. Because this dude right here, he gave land that he didn't even own. And what they wanted was they wanted to suck America in the war. And he agreed to give them the land and in exchange, Walter Rothschild brought America into the war. It was all a setup. Listen to this. The background of British support under Balfour for a Jewish homeland in Palestine, though idealistically embedded in 19th century evangelical expectations and Christian feelings that England was to play a role in the advent of the millennium and Christ's second coming was primarily linked to geopolitical calculations. So the whole point of this, they were trying to fulfill Bible prophecy to bring about the second coming of Jesus, which they were bringing about the second coming of the Antichrist because that's who they're looking for. These were originally pre precipitated by the Eastern crisis after Muhammad Ali occupied Syria and Palestine. It goes in talking about this guy right here, Theodore Hurls. This guy is pretty much responsible for starting the Zionist movement. It started before that, but he's given credit for it. And it goes on and on, talks about them right here. Talks about Zionism. This is where you get the Zionist state of Israel. That's not Israel, people. I think I proved that with facts from history that you can go look up and research for yourself. And more importantly, the Bible. Let's read this last part right here. In 18... 96 Theodore Hurls, a Jewish journalist living in Austria Hungary, published The Jew State or the State of the Jews, in which he asserted that the only solution to the Jewish question in Europe, including growing anti Semitism, was the establishment of a state for the Jews. You can go do some research on him and you can see that he is not a Jew. He followed the Talmud. The Israel that is claiming to be Israel over there is the synagogue of Satan. And I've only scratched the surface on this. This should get you started, but this should also be enough for you to see that you've been buying into a lie. One of Satan's most memorable deceptions a fake israel and majority of christians have bought it hook line and sinker now you're faced with two choices you can continue believing the lie or you can dive into the scriptures and see what is really going on and seek god on these matters so you can stop believing false doctrine and stand up and speak the truth. But I must warn you that once you go down this road and you want the truth, you are now responsible for speaking it. Matter of fact, you're already responsible because you have watched this video and you have been given truth. And if the Holy Spirit is dwelling in you, a lot of questions and a lot of things should be coming together for you. You should be questioning stuff like, hold on, Hold on. This makes sense. It makes sense because it's true. Also right here, look. A year later, Hertz founded the Zionist Organization, which at its first Congress called for the establishment of a home for the Jewish people in Palestine secured under public law. 
that's all I got. I can go deeper into this. I can be on this video for 24 hours talking about this stuff. Because I've been researching this stuff for years. For years. And I haven't really spoken about it because I felt like it wasn't time yet. Because I know that some people wouldn't be able to handle it. But it's time. And I've spoken what God has given me to speak. God bless you guys and girls in Jesus Christ's name.